beginning of March and welcome back to another monthly reset routine. I made this miniature little matcha. I've been obsessed with making them in these little cups because it's just so freaking cute. We are in fact back on my matcha game. I took quite a break from drinking caffeine, but I'm now reintegrating, which I'm really excited about. I'm not even gonna lie. Welcome into another monthly reset. Today, I'm really craving going in depth with this reset. So we're going to talk about goals, budget, monthly favorites, and I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a what I've been reading slash TBR segment at the end. If you guys are into books, stick around for that little end portion. But yeah, we're just gonna be resetting for the new month of March. If you're not familiar with my resets, I do these every single month. The structure really changes from month to month based on what I want to share. But this month we're throwing everything and the kitchen sink into this reset. So before we get into looking at my goals from last month, a quick little chat about how February was. So February was truly an emotional roller coaster. There were really high highs, new opportunities, exciting milestones, and there were really low lows specifically within my personal life. I've been alluding to sort of some things going on with my health in this past year, and I'm really happy to say that those things seem to hopefully be coming to a close, but this month I really had to confront the last of it, hopefully. So that was a little bit tough, but I'm really grateful to be on the other side and just feeling so grateful to feel healthy again, which I am like expressing gratitude for like every single day. So February was a little bit up and down, a little bit of a mixed bag, but I am really excited about some of the opportunities that arose in February. And I'm hoping those are things that I can materialize in March. Hoping March will be a really great month. Just building on that momentum, getting myself out of the slight rut that I experienced and hopefully feeling happy and healthy. That is, of course, the ultimate goal. Without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the February goals. If we're being so honest, I have not looked at these since I did my reset, so your guess is as good as mine in terms of how they went this month. Let's just go ahead and jump right into the goals. I still have yet to do the monthly journal entry. I have not been great about that the first two months of the year, but it is something that I really do want to implement, so I'm going to continue working on trying to be more consistent with that. Full-time creative journey goals. Focus on consistency on the writing channel. Upload one time per week. Yeah, I would say that I achieved this. I was consistent on the writing channel this month and that channel had its best month yet in terms of like watch hours and such since I started it. So really happy with that. Create testing and author's writing routine video. I also did that. So the full-time creative journey goals knocked it out of the park this month. So happy to see that. Fitness and wellness. Incorporate gratitude journaling and meditation. Well, <laughs> Um, I journaled once. This is still something I really want to do, so I think we're going to include this goal again next month. Continue being mindful of sugar intake. I would say I did this. I've become a lot more aware of my processed sugar, trying to limit the number of sugary items I have per day. I'm really happy with my progress on that. I'm definitely continuing to think about it and just being more mindful of what I'm consuming. Finish reading The Final Gambit. I did do this. One of my yearly goals is to read 12 books this year, so I'm trying to keep myself on track with that, and it is part of my romanticizing my life intention, which is also my theme for the year. Prioritize going on one plus walks per day and getting outside. Did a great job with this this month. Honestly, the walks outside doesn't even feel like something that I need to like force myself to do by any means. In fact, it's happening extremely naturally for me to want to do that. I spend a lot of time at my desk, at a computer. I work a full-time nine to five job where I'm spending like eight hours a day sitting in front of my computer. And then I also have this YouTube channel and I'm writing a book. So a lot of time is spent sitting down in front of a screen and so I very naturally feel motivated to want to get outside and move my body after doing that. It helps my mental health a lot to prioritize walking in the morning, in the evening, as many times as I can throughout the day because it just gets me out in the world, gets me looking off of a screen and of course is good for me. So that has not been a challenge at all and I have a feeling that will continue to be the case. Be on time to things. <laughs> Um, I was definitely more aware of this this month. I can't say that I really succeeded with this. I don't know why it's such a struggle to me. I see myself in real time self-sabotaging and making myself late. Like I could be totally ready to go with several minutes left and then suddenly I decide, oh, I might as well clean up the bathroom before I leave instead of just leaving when I should. It's a toxic trait, honestly. <laughs> So I think we're gonna have to recycle that goal because it's gonna take some time, I think, to make that hard lifestyle change. As silly as it sounds, it's such a impulse of mine. Okay, financial health. I had a goal to integrate my new budget tracker. I'm not sure 
what I meant by integrate. I did use my new budget tracker this month. I wasn't checking in on it weekly or anything, but it is all set up and I did input my January and February expenses. So I'm gonna count that as a win. And then my writing goal was to write 10,000 words this month, which I did in fact achieve. So honestly, this month in terms of goals looks way better than I was anticipating. I do think I set very realistic goals for February. I only missed two goals, got the majority of them. So I'm super proud of that. And that's motivating me to dive into our March goals. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't know why sitting crisscross applesauce is actually like the most uncomfortable thing in the world to me. Like my legs always fall asleep. It's a whole thing. Okay, I did a little reconfiguring of this template because I realized I was missing like this month's theme sort of vibe, which I had in my last year's monthly goals spread. And I really liked that. So we're going to bring that back so that I can kind of have a theme to go off of when I'm selecting my images and generally how I want the month to feel. So this month's theme is going to be healthy and carefree. The past like week or so, I hit a point where I was just tired of my own anxiety, tired of being stressed, tired of complaining. And I hit a wall where essentially I just had a 360 mindset shift of like, I literally cannot stress about this anymore. Stress is not good for us, right? It's terrible for our bodies. The best thing that I can do for my own health and my own sanity is to release this anxiety. And I did, and I took more of an approach to my day to day of like carefree, fun, like not taking anything too seriously, really just like floating along through the day and trying to have as many fun moments and like events as possible. And that was such a critical shift. I also had some conversations with my friends about gaslighting myself into health, <laughs> which obviously is a joke. I'm not actually gaslighting myself, but I've been thinking more about health affirmations. What can I do that will help me to feel healthy and thriving and just using the power of my brain and the whole mind over matter philosophy to feel better and it it worked like i felt a lot better after I made that shift. My anxiety was gone. I physically felt healthier. So I want to maintain that. I want to maintain this feeling of health and vitality and this carefree vibe. So keeping that in mind, some of the things that make me feel like carefree and just fun is reading. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a reading picture. This is also something I'm just trying to incorporate more in my life, especially now that I've gotten back into writing and I'm working on writing a book. Reading is really helpful in terms of just like teaching me about writing, making me a better writer, showing me what types of books are popular, things that I could potentially incorporate into my stories. But also it's just been a really fun hobby and it's made me feel more connected with my younger self because I really loved reading as a kid. So this first picture is like a girl at a bookstore. She's wearing all pink. And I really like this one because something that I've recently been like doing is getting in touch more so with my girlier side, wearing more like skirts and dresses, getting more dressed up as if every day is like an occasion, really indulging in like cute little items, like some of the stuff I'm gonna show you guys in my monthly favorites. So I really wanna just lean further into that and I feel like that really aligns with my theme for the year of romanticizing. And since it's March, we'll go ahead and add in a little flower photo, even though admittedly spring is my least favorite season. <laughs> But it's okay, we're gonna commit to the vibes. Okay, so last month's highlights. Started negotiating my first sponsorship deal. This is a really big deal for me. It's actually over on my second channel, which is crazy. I don't think I could have ever imagined that I would get a sponsorship over there first. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I have yet to do a sponsorship in the several years that I've been on YouTube. So I'm really excited to have my first one and delve into that side of YouTube and monetizing a YouTube channel. Hit 60,000 words in my book started talking to my cover designer, had a fun night in with my friend Dustin, started drinking caffeine again. I know that sounds silly, but I missed matcha. Started feeling healthier, which needs a million exclamation points because I'm so, so grateful to feel healthier now. Let's go ahead and dive into the specific goals. I haven't actually thought about this. I think we're gonna jump around because there's a few that I know off the bat. So in terms of romanticizing my life, we're gonna keep it going with the reading goals because I wanna make sure that I'm continuing to prioritize that it's such a self-care thing for me i enjoy it so much and like i said it has all of these benefits that we talked about earlier so i want to finish the serpent and the wings of night which is a romanticy book that i'm loving we'll talk about it more in the book portion at the end of this video personal and lifestyle i think we have to recycle the goal to be on time to things it just i it needs to happen i need to get better about this <laughs> and then i'm also going to put prioritize my appearance that was one of my yearly goals was to 
put more time and effort into self-care and getting ready for the day and all of that. And I do notice such a difference in how I feel when I prioritize that. So I want that to be a focus this month. Plus, like I said, I'm getting more into like wearing cute outfits and just like wanting to be fully ready for the day. And so I feel like that's a good goal. Okay, in terms of romanticizing my life, I also wanna set a goal just to take myself on more dates. This can be a coffee shop date. It can be going to some shops or an area that I really want to walk around and explore. Doesn't need to be anything far because I know that I won't follow through with that, but there's so many things in the area that I love and that I never make time to go to, even like for an hour or two on the weekends. And I really wanna work on that. So that's a fun goal to set for this month. In terms of fitness and wellness, I just wanna set a goal to keep feeling healthy and using health affirmations just want to keep with that mind over matter philosophy and trying to cultivate a healthy feeling in my life and then of course we're going to recycle that goal to do journaling and meditation which is something i still really want to prioritize i'm really craving it but again not something that i've made time for yet in terms of full-time creative journey first of all the writing channel hit a thousand subscribers last month which i don't even think was on my goals list but was a huge accomplishment so i'm so grateful for that we're getting pretty close to that channel getting monetized the only requirement that's really missing at this point is the watch time hours let's take a look at how many watch time hours i have left to get because i would love to hit monetization by the end of april so basically what would it take for me to get monetized in the next two months okay i only need 1200 more watch hours to get monetized truly crazy so let's just set a goal to get 600 plus watch hours this month which should be very doable i got over a thousand last month on brielle writes and then have fun with making content i feel like my content benefits when i really have fun with it when i really put in that little extra effort i use more creative shots and then i just feel more confident in what i'm putting out so i want to just have fun with it experiment and not take it too seriously like have a bit of a light-hearted approach to it this month because sometimes when i overly fixate on growth it can start to feel very serious very strategic and like hard and i really just don't want it to feel hard this month and then writing goals is just going to be the same goal that I've had the last two months, which is to write 10k words this month. So I feel really good about these goals. They're pretty simple, very achievable, and I feel like we're going to knock it out of the park again this month. Now we're going to go ahead and sit on the couch and talk a little bit about my budget from February. This is something that I haven't really been sharing very frequently, but I do have an entire new budgeting spreadsheet that I've been using for the new year, and I feel good about how I did with money in February, which has not happened in a long time for me to actually feel confident about how I managed my money in a month so yay <laughs> so i do all my budgeting in google sheets and i did just purchase a new template for 2024 that i'm personally extremely obsessed with this is obviously february i already filled this out for the month and honestly it's stunning <laughs> So we're gonna go ahead and talk through how February went in terms of money. So first of all, the elephant in the room, I did get a bonus this month, which is the reason why it was such a financially great month. So I got a bonus on top of my usual two paychecks. And then I had a bunch of random miscellaneous income streams, things like Kofi, which is related to my YouTube channel. It's subscribers who want to buy me a virtual coffee. Then we have jury duty. I got paid for going to jury duty, which was so fun. Then I got a YouTube AdSense paycheck this month which is always so exciting when one of those hit my bank account i got paid out 11 dollars from amazon associates which is like affiliate links and then i made 12 cents from interest on my savings account but 12 cents is 12 cents and it was very exciting because i just opened this high yield savings account i think in the past month or two and just started contributing to it so this is a new venture for me so i'm really excited to finally be on the high yield savings account game i feel like it's long overdue and now i have sinking funds for different categories which we'll talk through when we get there but i'm so happy to actually be making some interest now so that's the income situation then obviously we have my bills so i paid 1900 in rent steep los angeles vibes <laughs> Did not have to pay electricity this month. This is something that only comes through like every other month, every three months. Wi-Fi, $85. Spectrum is robbing, robbing me. It is 
painful. Laser hair removal, I'm on a payment plan because I got laser hair removal. And then I paid $180 for my car insurance. In terms of expenses, so this is an overview of my expense summary. And can I just say, this is the first month, like in a long time, that I'm actually under for almost all of my categories. Mind blowing. Admittedly, some of this is because I had a gift card that I was using for quite a bit of February, but still. <laughs> So this template actually has a separate expense tracker, which I do really like. So this is a breakdown of my monthly spending in February. We'll go through this quickly, but it's actually a pretty short list this month, which I'm feeling very excited about. We have Bardona, which was brunch, movie tickets. I bought a font for my YouTube channel that was $40. Some random Venmo transactions, gas, obviously. Some eating out coffee shops. I did have a birthday that I went to, so that involved two Ubers and then buying food and drinks at the birthday. A huge eye doctor expense, which I hate for me. <laughs> it is what it is, gotta take care of those things. I will always, always happily pay for health-related expenses. Obviously it was Valentine's Day this month, so I got some gifts for my boyfriend. Went out to a cute diner and got a pair of pants at Brandy Melville and bought some books. And then of course I have my voice lessons, which are $260 every single month. And then if we look at the expense summary, I went under on gas, didn't pay anything for laundry because I already had quarters from previous months. Vocal lessons is always the same. Coffee shops I was under, mark this day in history. I'm a coffee shop girl. The fact that I was under blows my mind. Again, that gift card definitely had something to do with that. Going out and social I was under. Wants I was under, which never happens. Didn't end up getting a cleaning service this month. So that's $270 that I just didn't spend. Although I do want to get that in March because the apartment needs it. It's definitely showing that I forgoed it in February. Didn't spend anything for home and personal care. Although I will say like when I retroactively look back at expenses, something like an Amazon purchase could have been for that or a Whole Foods purchase and I might just not know. So that's it's possible I did actually spend in that category. Uber is $22. That's a lot lower than my $100 allowance. Parking, I did go over. I don't know why I spent so much on parking this month. It's okay. It's still only $27. Miscellaneous was under, which literally miscellaneous the past few months had been like $1,000, like random expenses. I also feel like part of the reason that went down is because I added more categories so that I could get more specific instead of throwing a ton of stuff into miscellaneous, which I think was a good move. So I can really get a sense of where my money's going. Eating out, we're just barely under budget. Health, just barely under budget. Although I just added that in because of the eye doctor appointment, that's not going to be my normal health budget. And then gifts, slightly under budget. In terms of subscriptions, so I have TubeBuddy, Patreon, and Adobe right now. This is actually really pared down. I cut out quite a few subscriptions. So this is a variable expense breakdown. You can see the percentage that I spent on each of my variable expenses. Vocal lessons is the biggest chunk by far, followed by health due to that lovely eye doctor payment. <laughs> And then we have wants going out in social and gas as the next highest, which honestly absolutely makes sense to me. And then in terms of my savings, so like I mentioned, I recently opened a high yield savings account, which I'm so excited about. I'm so excited. And I wanted to create sinking funds for several bigger expenses that I have coming up. So right now I have three sinking funds. This is on top of a small cushion fund slash emergency fund that I already had built. It's still small though. So I do plan to build a larger emergency fund in my high yield savings account. Obviously, if I needed some money, I could pull it from these other singing funds. So it's not so urgent for me to feel like I need that dedicated emergency fund, but long-term that is something that I want to build. For the time being though, the three singing funds that I am saving for is Hawaii. So I'm going to Hawaii in May and I just wanted to save like $800 for miscellaneous excursions and like eating out there and stuff like that. My self-publishing singing fund. So I am hoping to slash planning to self-publish the book that I'm working on. If you guys want to hear more about that, definitely go check Check out my second channel. I do want to save up for that. And I have goals for each of these categories as well. Maybe we'll go into the ally dashboard and I can show you guys these singing funds. And then I have a moving singing fund because we are moving in the fall to Seattle and moving is very expensive. So I want to get ahead of saving for that big transition. So between these three categories, we saved about $2,000 this month, which I was really happy with. Essentially, I just poured my bonus 
into these sinking funds. Then we have my HSA contributions, which is my health savings account. I don't know why my HSA dropped from $80 per paycheck to 18. I need to just go into the portal and fix this. This happened with the new year and I don't know why, but I haven't fixed it yet. So right now I'm literally contributing only $18 per paycheck to my health savings account. And then last but not least, we have my investments. So right now the only investing I'm doing is through my 401k and I contributed about $2,200 to my 401k this month. I do have a very aggressive 401k investment strategy, so that is where all of my investing money is going in hopes that I can max out my 401k this year. So I'm really proud of how this month went in terms of money. I'm feeling really good about it. Of course, I'm not always gonna have that bonus, but hopefully I can find ways to still try and contribute to the singing funds, even if it is on a bit of a lower scale. I wanna make a habit of putting any auxiliary money out outside of my normal paychecks into savings since that is kind of bonus money at the moment and things that hopefully I don't necessarily need to rely on. So that is my strategy. I'm gonna go ahead and take you guys into the Ally Ally bank um, dashboard so that you guys can take a look at my sinking funds. So this is what my buckets look like. And this is the main reason why I wanted to get an Ally account. Shout out to my sister for recommending Ally to me. I've always really wanted a savings account where I could very physically have these sorts of buckets instead of just, you know, having it all in one account and having to use a spreadsheet to divvy it up. So I really like this system and how clear and concise it is and how you can set these saving goals. It's amazing. So the core savings is essentially just where your money gets dropped into before you disperse it. So I have a $2,000 moving goal, which as you can see, we've saved about $730 towards. Realistically, maybe that should be a little higher knowing that we might need to pay some upfront costs for whatever place we move into. But for now, 2000 is the goal. For my vacation, I saved $800. And then for self-publishing, I saved $550. And I'm hoping to save $3,000 because there's a lot of expenses that go into publishing a book. Specifically, the biggest one is hiring an editor. And I know that hiring an editor is going to be well over a thousand, maybe even two thousand dollars. So right now I've saved enough for my cover designer, so I wanted to save that first. In terms of how I'm basing my strategy with which goals I'm saving towards, obviously I'm prioritizing the goals that have a sooner deadline. The vacation is in May, that's only a few months away, so I wanted to max that out first. Let's talk monthly favorites and books. First things first, monthly favorites. I have a few items that I want to shout out that I've been loving this past month, starting off with one that is visible in the back of this shot and that is my cloud wrist rest. I'm obsessed. So essentially a wrist rest is supposed to keep your wrists obviously and your arms from like digging into the tough corner of your desk. So this past month I started thinking about how to make my desk set up more ergonomic especially since as I mentioned earlier I spend a lot of time at my desk more time than I would like to spend at my desk. So I want to make my setup as like comfortable as possible and part of that was getting a wrist rest. I do think eventually I want to get a monitor and a keyboard since I know that that's just a lot better than a laptop in terms of ergonomics but for now we started with this little upgrade and I love this thing it's got a like bouncy texture it's also just like fun to play with <laughs> so I definitely you know during calls and stuff we'll just be playing with this cloud and it's so fun and it came with a mini one as well this is the little mini guy that came with it as well so cute not entirely sure how i would use this i feel like this could be useful if you have like a mouse and you need like a little wrist rest that item is just from amazon i'll have it linked as well as all of my other favorites for the month linked down below my next favorite is washi tape i'm just now entering my washi tape era i could see myself being a bullet journaler in the future i'm not currently but one day. I mentioned in my last video my like Notion setup tour that I've been using a physical planner and part of that has been using little washi tape and stickers to spice things up. Next favorite is also a new addition to my desk setup and it is this mechanical pink calculator. I'm obsessed with this. I've been using this whenever I need to do calculations for my monthly budgets or my analytics, even things at work where I need to crunch some numbers. I was really craving a physical calculator because I was tired of pulling up the calculator on my phone or my computer every time I needed to do calculations and this one also just happens to be super cute and satisfying to type on because it has those mechanical keys. One day I will have a keyboard that feels like this when you type on it. But for now, I have this cute little calculator. Again, from Amazon, not expensive. Would strongly recommend. The last little favorite I want to touch on is still molten. <laughs> because we were burning it, but it is this Valeris candle. Now this is actually from the Smells Like Books Etsy account, which makes candles that smell like scenes or specific 
things from books. So Valeris is actually a city in the Accord of Thorns and Roses series, which I'm obsessed with. So cute. Strongly recommend checking out this Etsy account. I just think it's such a sweet idea to have scents inspired by, you know, things that people love, books, fantasy worlds. So I'm obsessed with this. It also smells amazing, obviously. And we love supporting a little small business. Okay, now we get into talking about books. So we're gonna talk about what I read in the month of February and what I'm going to read, hopefully, in March. So this is the stack of books that we're gonna be talking about. <laughs> I'm in such a book obsessed era and I am still a physical books girl. I'm sure I will have a Kindle one day, but for now there is nothing quite like a physical book, especially a hardcover. So good. So first off, what I read this month. So as you saw in my monthly goals, one of my goals for the month was to finish The Final Gambit, which is the third book in the Inheritance Game series, which is like a, I think it's classified as YA, mystery, romance. It's basically about a girl who comes into a ton of money and she randomly inherits billions of dollars from this billionaire who died and she has to come into this crazy family dynamic with all of this like mystery and intrigue and basically figure out how to survive in the house with all of them and she does have romantic subplots with two of the boys two of the grandsons which is very interesting. So I've loved this series. I really enjoyed this third book. I think I gave it four stars on my little reading tracker. Then I read Percy Jackson, The Olympians, The Chalice of the Gods, which is the latest installment in the Percy Jackson series. Recent release, I think it came out alongside like the TV show, obviously to build hype for it. And this was a cute little book, very short, relatively low stakes. I would say it's all about Percy Jackson trying to get into college. So it definitely has a little bit more of a lighthearted, low stakes vibe compared to the actual core series. That being said, I did really enjoy it. I loved the Percy Jackson series. It was my favorite as a kid. So this is very nostalgic for me. I loved getting to see the characters. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was as captivating necessarily as the series itself for me, but it's a short little spinoff. You know, I, I wouldn't expect it to be as high stakes and like complicated. So overall really enjoyed this book still and gave it four stars as well. Then I started The Serpent and the Wings of Night, which I'm still in the middle of reading. I'm a little over halfway through. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I could scream from the rooftops about how much I'm loving this book. It is a romanticy. It's definitely adult. It's about vampires and like a deadly competition. And it's just, it's just the spice of life. <laughs> I really like the romance in this book so far. And it is a little bit on the darker, more gory side. So definitely keep that in mind going into it. That being said, I don't have a really high tolerance for that stuff and I'm still able to get through it. It hasn't been traumatizing for me yet. So that has kind of given me some faith in my ability to get through these more intense fantasy books. But yeah, I'm really enjoying this so far. Would strongly recommend. And I'm definitely going to try and read the second book this month as well. Knowing that I only read realistically like one maybe two books in a month. That will probably take me the whole month. I mean, these books are big. <laughs> and when I start series, I usually like to just finish out the series instead of starting another book or another one. So I know I want to read the second book right after this. That being said, if by some miracle I make it through both of those books, my next undertaking would be The Brothers Hawthorne, which is not quite part of the Inheritance Game series, I believe, but it is following the same characters. It's closely associated. So I guess you would call it more of like a spinoff book, but I'm really excited for this. I got the heart hardcover version. It's the thickest book in the series so far and it has dual POV. Actually it might have triple POV. I don't know. So far it has dual POV following the two love interests from the first books which I really like. But yeah I'm really excited about this. Obviously I want to finish out the storyline that I have been chugging through with this first trilogy. So that's the vibe in terms of what I'm hoping to read. And that is it for this monthly reset. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of new format, these new segments that I'm throwing in. If you did, make sure to give the video a like. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, comment down below some sort of flower emoji since it is March and it is spring against my will. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know down in the comments what you guys thought. If you have any goals for March, how your year is going so far, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.